downtown, right on Main Street, is a blacksmith shop. Metzik blacksmiths, they were. And it was, <laughs> she was a dirty building. That building, a uh, dirt floor, didn't it? Yeah, it had a dirt floor and wood beams, everything. It was really an old timer. I mean, she was an old time. You wouldn't stoves and uh, belt driven equipment was there. It, it was quite a building. And when I started out down at the old shop, I uh, got to working on milk trucks because there was a lot of uh, can uh, hauling milk in the area here. In the tractors, I just loved tractors. And I didn't care what kind they were or how big they were, but I had loved tractors. And the John Deere dealership was across the road from us. And uh, it uh, was a good John Deere dealership. Hoosier Implement was the owner of it. And uh, it, it was good. Well, George Hoosier had just gotten in a little trouble with this and that. And so we bought the building up there and uh, made uh, the building fit us. It's right on top of the hill, just like it always was. There's a grass, there's still a grass lot there that's empty right next to your Moriarty refrigeration. That's where he had his farm equipment parked. I remember tractors being parked there and equipment. Yeah, yeah. I would say probably up till he built this place. Yeah, probably. And then we uh, come out here with the boys here and uh, uh, but, made this building from scratch. And it was really a great, great thing for us to put a building up like this as well as the building in back here. And uh, the boys did most of the work, <laughs> most of the figuring out of the place and it really turned out great for us. And then we uh, decided to well, before we built this building, we built another building behind us here. And that was for doing uh, paint work and engine work, things like that that needed to be done. Dad always had real good mechanics, I can remember growing up in the shop here. I mean, it was older guys with experience. I mean, you didn't have to babysit them. Uh, the work was always done the right way. And uh, I guess that's how I got instilled in my teachings was from, you know, working with them older people and very good mechanics. And I come back in 98, I believe. Well, you said you, I know you told them you needed a, how did that go? And Dad told you know, Well, he asked me to come back and I asked him, well, what am I going to do? And he says, well, there's an office and there's a desk. And You'll figure it out. And I remember the office was right there and the door was in the same spot right there. And the people come through that door and they'd ask the secretary, is Rich here? Well, sometimes he was and sometimes he wasn't, but everyone that come through the door was looking for Rich. Is Rich here? Is Rich here? Well, I remember well, no one wanted to talk to Pat. <laughs> I even said to, uh, said to mom one day, well, everyone wants to talk to dad, no one wants to talk to me. She says, you gotta make your own customers. So, uh, and that's very true. I mean, if you guys wanna sell something, you gotta be able to figure it all out and then get her sold, you know. Up until 2011, up to the point of 2011, We represented a lot of different brands and a lot of different products. And through new products, through it all, we always like to also deal with pre owned some used equipment. And we would always enjoyed, probably the same reason you started with going to auctions, 
is the reason why we continued with the auctions is it did provide a good living it's also a little getaway as well you go to an auction and we get away from that that project in the shop that might be giving you some some grief well dad john and i we always we were traveling through Illinois and Iowa and Indiana, bringing, bringing up used farm equipment that was really too small for them down there, but was just the size that guys in Wisconsin were using. And providing good quality farm equipment that wasn't so easily found up here. Also dealing with all the new stuff that we were selling. And in 2011, I remember I was driving back from Illinois on a, on a Thursday night, about midnight with a load of equipment, thought to myself, why in the world are we doing this? And we're just burning a candle on both ends. Just realized we can't be everything to everyone. Let's just, let's just pick up what we really enjoy doing. So we talked to channel, what is it we really enjoy doing? Well, it's, it's that used equipment. Well, what are we going to do about it? Well, we decided that let's just focus on, on the used equipment. And it was at that point that we sold 42 different brands. We represented 42 different brands of, of different products. And we wrote, we talked to mom and dad to let them know what we wanted to do. And they supported us. It was, it wasn't easy. Dad built it up to where he had it at that point. A lot of hard work, nights and weekends, and promises that he he wouldn't break. And now John and I wanted to go a different direction, and he supported us. He said, "Go ahead, it's your turn." So at that point, uh, we wrote a letter to every single manufacturer wrote a letter sent it to every single manufacturer we represented wrote a different letter to every single customer that we had record of and let the manufacturers know that we were going to be done selling new equipment and uh, we wrote that letter and sent it to every single customer I think we sent out 8,000 letters to our customers let them know we're going to be our change of plans for the business. But we gave them time. We gave them 90 days to come in. 90 days to come in and get your service work done, get your parts done, your warranty work done before we were going to regear. And uh, for the most part, everyone understood. All of our customers understood. There was a few that were up in arms. But for the most part, everyone understood. But you know how many manufacturers called us to ask us to stay or to ask us, why are you doing this? Not a single one. And we thought we represented some pretty good manufacturers. And we did. That just kind of showed you how important we were on their list. <laughs> you know, I mean, we did a heck of a job for them, but uh, they were definitely not knocking our doors down to keep with them. And... It was, in my lifetime, the best transition we had, me and you did. I mean, I, I told Pat I'd rather eat hot dogs than deal with that new equipment every, you know, <laughs> every day. I mean, you you told Pat that, but you told the bank that one day when we were yeah <laughs> sitting in the bank meeting with the bank bank president, and he said, "Are you sure you want to do this, John Pat?" John looked him square in the eye and he says, I'd rather eat hot dogs than sell that new equipment. That was a that was a heck of a transition because I mean that's all we knew how to do was the way it was. And but we could see the future just selling this used equipment and at that time it was it was all farm machinery. We had some construction equipment and 
I don't know how many used tractors we would sell a month. I mean, it was 25, 30 tractors a month. You couldn't. It's about like selling hay rakes. You couldn't <laughs> haul them in fast enough. And I mean, they went all over. I mean. Yeah, it was before, almost before the internet. You know, it was all through newspaper and word of mouth. Yeah. It wasn't no tractor house. That was just in its infancy at the, right. back then. Yeah. And we kind of, transition into more construction equipment. I don't know what year that would have been. It was in 2015. We had, we began to have our own auctions here. We started with a drive-through auction here in our shop. We put in overhead doors where we could run the equipment right straight through in front of bleachers, holding the, holding the people so you wouldn't have to be out in the weather. And we kind of outgrew that and we needed to add on to our, our lot out back to Hold more, to hold more equipment that we were bringing in. That was in 2015. 2015, we had a we had rows of equipment out there. We went from selling, I don't know, 25, 30 tractors, used tractors a month to five or six. And, uh, we lost a lot of money that December in that auction. And I remember we, we got called into that that same bank, same same back room, around that same big table. And uh, the banker said, well, you sure you guys want to do this? Yeah, we're going to do this. Even after you lost all that money? Yeah, we're going to figure it out. We've got to move forward. They cut our line of credit back, turned us loose again, and took the titles for our vehicles and leans on our houses to let us go again. And, That's uh, what was really nice. We had uh, we had the best bankers. The best the that are today. Yeah, it might not sound like he was very good, but we couldn't have done any of this without him. Yeah. He turned us loose again, cut our line of credit by a third. And thought, how in the world are we going to make it on a third less line of credit? And we couldn't make it on a full line. I yeah. guess like anything else, you got to figure it out. So I hopped in a hopped in my pickup and started to go visit some construction equipment dealers because they already had made connections with a lot of the agricultural dealers in the state. Well, now it's time to expand into the unknown. Let's go talk to some construction dealers. And I remember stopping at, at Caterpillar in Madison. It's one of my first stops. Walking in there, intimidated. Pretty fancy place, lots of fancy equipment, didn't know much about. Walked in there and said, I'm gonna figure this out. And uh, that was kind of the start of our construction equipment. It, uh, it really turned into good business. It, uh, my heart in all reality still in the farm machinery. It's just probably because I know a little bit more about that, but uh, this construction equipment is sure great people to work with. It is way different than a farmer though. A farmer buy, comes in here, buys a tractor and he's taking that home and that's his pride and joy. Uh, a contractor comes and buys a dozer, he's, that's just another tool in this toolbox. You know, he's billing it out by the hour. There is a, a quite a difference in, in them too, but. Uh, a lot of our inventory, the majority of it is traded in. It's traded in at a franchise dealer, Let's say a Caterpillar, John Deere, and those guys are so tuned into and focused on selling new to keep their market share up. They're fighting the same fight that we used to fight with keeping your market share up in order to get paid your the labor rate that you want to get paid and get paid your, your co-op advertising. They don't have time to deal with the used equipment. So we were able to buy a lot of their lot of their trade-ins they didn't want to mess with. And uh, that provided a good living for us. And they'd get we get the story from them what their piece was that they took in trade because they got the story from their customer as they traded in, passed it along to us. So it made it 
it made it easy for us to sell. We had a story from, from when they got it and you able to pass that along. So that provided a good living. It was, it was a good business. Absolutely. I mean, it's, uh, it's just kind of unreal how dad started, like dad always said, he started with nothing and got as most of that left. <laughs> but we, we transitioned so much here from back when he started to today that it's, it's kind of hard to believe for a lot of people, you know, I mean. If we didn't make a transition, we wouldn't be here. I mean, it... It's the... <laughs> I don't go to church too often, but when I do, I say a prayer, and the prayer goes like this. <laughs> Thank you, God, for giving me the ability to deal with the challenges that you give me. <laughs> That's what we do here. Nothing's ever been easy here. I That's what we've yeah. been able to do to get us along and figure it out as we go. And to stay ahead of the curve. We've bought a lot of stuff over the years that just this neat one-off stuff that I don't know where it'll end up on the 29th, but it, it's going to find a new home. And it's stuff that's really close to me and Pat, but yet again, it's just stuff. And uh, we've had, I don't know how many calls on them, regular cab pickups, some low hour uh, tractors, uh, a lot of our used equipment. It's just really drawn a lot of interest and I, it's looking forward to it real honestly just to see where this stuff ends up going and it's no home you know john had said going into this that he'd rather be talking to an auctioneer at 50 years old instead of 80 years old and i think what he means by that is it's gonna be fun to see where this stuff goes and to enjoy, we enjoyed acquiring it, but we're also gonna enjoy releasing it to someone else and seeing what they're gonna do with it. And we'll acquire some more stuff. A lot of the stuff, the majority of stuff we've acquired within the last 10 or 12 years. And let's see what, what happens in the next 10 or 12 years. It were, this, it's a retirement auction. Arnon Motors is retiring. Arnon Motors has been been right here since 1967. That's when Dad started. Arnon Motors is, as we know it, is going to retire. We don't know what the future is going to bring. We have ideas what we want to do, but who knows what well, what the future brings? <laughs> there's no guarantees in life, and uh, but I know with our work ethic, we'll be just fine. It's. Uh, we just want to say a big thank you for all of our past and present customers. We couldn't have got this far without you folks. I mean, it's just the relationships we've built with so many customers, dealers, farmers, contractors. I mean, it's just want to say thank you. We built friendships out of all those relationships started as business relationships that turned into friendships that has meant a lot it's the business has provided a, a good living but what we're taking away from it is the relationships and the lessons learned that we wouldn't have learned if it wasn't for the business I read somewhere the other day that as parents, we're there to provide memories for our children. I guess that's what our customers have provided for us, our memories and lessons to us along the way. 
I think that <laughs> it's the same thing Dad would say. Yes. What they did. Well, you just just can't thank everybody enough. Very good. I'm gonna we're gonna have an auction on April 29th. And this stuff's there to sell. It's gonna it's gonna get a new home. It's been been under our care and supervision for a long time, and it's time to let's turn that loose. Let's let's uh, give that stuff a new chapter in its life. <laughs>